In February, your your company, Spiker, bought Sabin. So why was that deal so important to you? Because obviously, you work really hard and really long to make that happen and finally did it in literally at the last minute or maybe even beyond the last minute. You could argue beyond the last minute. Uh, it was very important because we felt it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Where can you buy a 63-year-old iconic car manufacturer completely outfitted, completely state-of-the-art for $74 million? It happens once in your lifetime. And it could only happen because of the perfect storm that raged through this industry in 2008, 2009. Had Saab been performing really well, it would have been impossible to buy. This is a, a car brand that's really built around a faithful core of true believers. What are they saying about it? Well, this? they are over the moon, and that is putting it mildly. But of course, with this product, this very premium product, we will look way beyond just the uh, limited group of, uh, of hardcore enthusiasts. You cannot build your business merely on that. I think one of the problems with Saab today is people don't have a really good idea of what Saab stands for anymore. They've kind of lost its way a little bit. What do you, what do you think it stands for? What do you think it needs to stand for? The, the average uh, Saab buyer, 78% of them have a university degree or something similar. Um, and they're extremely loyal. They're very much internet savvy. They read everything there is to read. So they're relatively easy to reach. Now, your company, Spiker, sells a very small number of very high-end cars that are, that are talking about independent pickers. These are very unusual looking and very interesting cars in their own right. What does Saab, does Saab do anything for Spiker? Oh, definitely. First of all, there's 1,100 dealers worldwide, uh, about 5% of which we estimate will take on the Saab and Spiker brand under one roof. That means trebling the current infrastructure uh, in terms of distribution for Spiker. Secondly, Saab has a fully-fledged production and engineering facility, including wind tunnels, um, uh, climate chambers, uh, 900 engineers, on which uh, we can now start to draw. And thirdly, there is a huge parts bin uh, where we can uh, pick and choose from, uh, tremendously reducing our uh, uh, bill of materials of our cars without uh, actually improving the quality uh, even further. When Spiker bought this company, it was essentially in a state of almost suspended animation. They'd actually started shutting down. What did you find? Was that a challenge for you coming in to a situation where a company had essentially, it seemed like, almost stopped running? If you walk through the factory on the 23rd of February, it was empty. No cars in production, no material, nothing. In other words, we had to restart the whole company, both in terms of our manufacturing, but getting all the suppliers going to get the product development to restart, as well as all the activities out in the marketplace. And the liquidation that we were put in actually kept us from producing cars over a seven-week period. What we have to do is to regain the confidence that Saab is here to stay. It's taken more than a year and several failed attempts, but General Motors says it has finally found a firm buyer for its Swedish auto brand, Saab. Tiny Dutch-based carmaker Spiker will pay $74 million to take over the loss-making automaker. GM will retain $326 million in new Saab Spiker automobile shares. The deal hinged on a loan guarantee, and Stryker says the Swedish government has now backed a European loan to Saab worth $556 million to keep Saab operating. GM said back in November it could not find a buyer for Saab and had started to liquidate the 60-year-old brand. But cars were still coming off the line and orders were still being processed. So GM says there should be no problem in honoring warranties. Now, Spiker makes only a handful of luxury cars each year. So the more than 3,000 Saab employees in Sweden await the details of Spiker's plan. The two sides expect the deal to be completed in mid-February. Jim Bolden, CNN, London. You're looking at a car that basically came back from the dead. Saab was just about to start production on their new 9.5 when GM decided to kill the brand because they couldn't find a buyer for it. After all that, they finally did reach agreement with supercar maker Spiker. So now the 9.5 is here. Question is, was this car worth the wait?
One thing I'll say for sure, the outside of this car looks fantastic. GM's designers, I think, did a great job of catching the essence of a Saab without making it look old-fashioned or dowdy. They've really updated it nicely. On the interior, it's pretty traditional Saab stuff. Very stark, very clean, not a lot of fancy, frilly stuff. But given that, I think it could use a little better material quality in certain places. And I think, you know, some of the fits could be better. There's some big gaps here that I don't want to see on a car when I'm paying $50,000 for it. Other than that, it looks pretty nice and everything feels nice in your hands and it works pretty well. Really, if you're looking for an out and out performance machine, this may not be the car for you. But honestly, I don't think that's what Saab's after here. This car has a nice balance of comfort and de really decent performance. You actually get a little bit more power than from some of the competitors out of this car's uh, turbocharged V6. Fuel economy is pretty good too. Like a lot of cars these days, it actually has an adjustable suspension system so you can go for comfort or intelligent mode or sport. The intelligent mode actually balances between comfort and sport, makes the adjustments automatically depending on your speed and your driving style. This one has their uh, all-wheel drive system that gives nice feel and responsiveness. It's not intrusive at all. Feels very good when the roads are slippery and wet. So there's really not a lot wrong with this car. In fact, I like it a lot. The issue is that for customers that are considering other European luxury brands, Saab needs to come in with something over and above. I'm not sure this car quite manages that, but I want to wait a little while and see what the new owners do to fix some of the...